Hi, my name is Albert Rapp and in this video I want to show you the janitor package that can help you clean up all of those Excel files that you read into R. So if you read in a lot of Excel files, you will know that a lot of those files contain empty rows, empty columns, weird column names, some other rows that you don't even want to read in. And as you know especially that there are those, these weird uh, date columns that are just not printed in date but some other weird number. With the janitor package you can clean up all of these things quite easily and I will show you how you can leverage that. So to take a look at the janitor package I've opened a new quarto document here. If you wish feel free to do it in an R markdown document. Um, I just want to try out the new quarto style. And also I'm using the visual editor because I like this forward slash operator. I'm not sure if I will stick with the visual editor, but for now I will, for this video I will use it. And yeah, with the forward slash operator we can simply drop code chunks with the forward slash or drop any other, anything else like citations or whatever we need. So first off we will need to load uh, the tidyverse and the janitor package. And then we need to get our dirty Excel data into R. So I will use the read Excel package and I have saved the, the file dirty data from the GitHub package. Let me show you. So on the janitor package, uh, on the GitHub website, you will find this dirty data file and this it looks like this and we can uh, open it with uh, R. So let's read it and uh, it needs to be read XLSX otherwise we cannot read it. So let's um, check what we can see here. First off this looks messy. We have a lot of NAs, we have weird column names, we actually can see that the new names are uh, weird and because we have seen on GitHub that this first line doesn't really have any data, it's just a, a date uh, when the file was most recently updated. We should skip that line to make things easier. So let's do skip one to skip the first line and now it looks a little bit better. At least we have column names now that make a little bit more sense. We don't have two, three and so on as column names. but. These are not really nice to work with as they have a white space in them and they use upper and lower cases. So let's make them make uh, make cleaner names. With the janitor we can use, with the janitor package we can use the clean names function and this will automatically drop uh, new names for the column names. It will uh, put everything into lower letters and it will fill white spaces with these dashes. This makes working with them way easier because now I could do pull last name to get the column, right? So here this would be the result of my, uh, uh, of my column. Otherwise, if I had uh, white space in it, I would need to drop these ticks and then I would need uh, would need the capital letters. It, of course it works but it's a pain so let's try to avoid it with clean names. So there's that. Uh, we have clean names now but this data format is far from perfect so let's uh, do a couple more steps. First off notice that in this do not edit column in in the picture you saw, it's a blank blank um, column. We don't need it in our data wrangling process. So let us simply remove it and we can do this with remove and then empty. We could either take empty rows or columns. Um, here we can just um, use it without an argument and it defaults to removing both empty rows and co uh, columns. Of course, if we only want either of those, we can um, get rid of this, uh, only of one of them. Next up, we can remove constants. Um, so 
in here we see that this active column doesn't contain any information. Everything is yes, so we, there's no use of um, dragging it along. So let us remove the constant uh, columns and we have uh, successfully removed that one. Next up is working with the higher date. Take a look at this column higher date and anyone who's ever worked with uh, dates in Excel knows that it's a pain. It will You will write a date and then it will just format it weirdly, put some number in there and that's annoying. And this is exactly what we see here. We should have dates here, but what we get is numbers. Of course, we can um, transform it manually, but who has the time to do this? So let's use the janitor package to do this for us. So let's transform the higher date column with, um, what's the function name, Excel numeric to date. And we will, of course it will need the column, which we need to transform. Of course it's the same in this case. And there you go. We have successfully transformed the higher dates now. Okay, so let's take a look at other cool uh, janitor functions and some even uh, some are even surprising for instance if we let's drop another code chunk and let's took a, take a look at rounding you would say or oh, probably like i i would would have said uh, before i knew it uh, knew this function from gender package if we want to go from i don't know 0.5 to 2.5 in 0.5 uh, steps of course, this sequence is given as this one here. And in my naive opinion, or in my naive view, I would have guessed that if I put this into rounding, everything that ends with 0.5 will just would be rounded up. But this is not the case. Apparently, R by default uses bankers rounding. And well, if you don't want to implement your own rounding function, you can just take the janitor convenience function. So in this case, it is round half up and then we can drop in, drop in this function here. Let's just leave this there. And now we have the rounding that we would expect. So whenever it's 0.5, we will round upwards and otherwise we'll round downwards or leave it as it is if it's an integer anyway. But also if we want to have other rounding and this can sometimes be also really convenient that we can round to a specific fraction. So maybe we want to have quarters. So let's drop the same inputs in there and round to, round to a specific fraction. For that we will need to give a denominator of the fraction we want to round towards. So if we want to have quarters, we'll put the denominator four. Mm. In this case, let's go with some odd, not in 0.5 steps. So here we would, these numbers should be rounded towards the next quarter. I think this, this way it's easier to see. As you can see, now the results are only uh, quarters. In the previous example, it bothered me that technically it were quarters, but um, it was were also halves. So with the janitor package, you also get a lot of convenience functions, in this case for rounding, and that can help you in a lot of cases when you are shocked, as I was, by the rounding function, uh, by the default rounding function of R. Another cool function of the janitor package is to get dupes functions and as the name kind of implies, it helps us to find duplicate values. Let's take a drop another code chunk and take a look at the Star Wars uh, data set. So here we have um, characters from the Star Wars franchise and for each of them we have a bold lot of um, characteristics like sex, gender, homeworld, species, and whatnot. So with the janitor package, we can find observations that are similar. So maybe let's, um, let's take, I don't know, 
let's find observations who have the same homeworld. So here for homeworld, now we will get for each homeworld, we'll get a number of duplicate counts. So we have in this data sets, they are three from homeworld Eldoran, they are three from, uh, two from Corellia. Of course, this we could also, this, uh, we could also get from just the home, uh, just using count. As you can see, we would, could, get the same information with respect to the count, but then we would drop the remaining information. But what's really powerful is that we can use even more characteristics. So let's just say, let's take uh, home world and gender and species. I don't know if this uh, will result in something sensible. So here now we have two masculine humans from Eldoran. These are named I don't know, the name is cut off, but you, as you can see, this way we can find even more similar observations in data set and we can throw in as many characteristics as we wish. One last powerful um, function from the genital package is a whole set of functions, namely the uh, called table functions. It is similar to the table function, so let me, if you haven't used the table functions, let me demonstrate it. I rarely use it, so this, this table alternative is not really useful for me personally, but I've heard people rave on about how great table is uh, in comparison to table, or at least it's convenient. So I felt like I should show you. So in any case, with table, you can basically generate a table of counts for vectors. Let's just, uh, I don't know, throw in... Uh, I don't know, maybe from the MP might per gallon data set, let's throw in manufacturer into the table. And as you can see here, we get counts uh, for uh, how often a manufacturer appears. But of course, um, with table, we can do the same thing. I have the documentation open, so first we need to give a data set and then we can show, I can imply how, which variables we want to use. So manufacturer. We get a result here now, but this should be a data frame now. So if I get N, I can extract uh, this information just like any other data, uh, data frame. And with the table function, uh, this is a vector, so it's not really a table. And so this is kind of nice. It gives you a neater format to work with, and you can throw in um, another function, uh, another variable. Let's I don't know what do we have in here. I think classes in the data set as well. So here we get a full new table with counts, which is also neatly formatted. I'm not really sure. Can table do this kind of thing? Um, MPG manufacturer, MPG class, or is this how you would use it? Ah, oh, it's basically the same, but it's not a data frame, right? No, I cannot access it here, but this should be a data frame which I can access. So there you go. Table is kind of a nicer to work with form of table. And if you use the table function a lot to do counts for vectors, then go for it, use ta uh, table. There are a lot of adorn functions, which can be added uh, add on to the table functions to make uh, even nicer analyses. All right, this concludes my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you find the generator package as useful as I do. If you like this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and follow me on Twitter. Actually, this video was based on one of my blog posts that I wrote a couple of months ago and you can find the link to it in the description below. I will continue to record videos from my blog posts and coming up next is probably something from my GGplot series, so stay tuned and see you next time.